PAL World releases January the 19th in early access for $30. And I promise you, it's not what you think. Hi, I'm Erock on Tech, and today we're talking about PAL World and early access. I do not review games on this channel. I know it may seem like I do, but I really don't. I actually review PC hardware and how that hardware performs on a new release title or how an existing title performs with new hardware. But basically, the focus of my channel is PC gaming, PC building, PC hardware testing things of that nature, more so on the PC hardware side of things, as opposed to actually reviewing video games. So with that being said, I was incredibly surprised when Pocket Pair contacted me and asked me if I wanted a review key. And honestly, Power World is a game that's been on my wish list now for a while. I was planning on getting it. I'm a huge Pokemon fan. So I figured, yeah, absolutely. Why not? Now, with all that being said, I will say this. I'm going to talk about the technical performance of the game because I tested it on a variety of hardware and we're going to start the video with that. And then on the second half of the video, I will talk about my overall thoughts and impressions of the game itself as it stands. And like I said in the intro, it's not what you think it is. If you think Pal World is supposed to be just a Pokemon ripoff with guns, that's not entirely accurate. It's really not. I mean, yes, the trailers definitely make it seem like that, but there's so much more to the game and the game is so much different than what I expected it to be. But first of all, let's get into it. So I did test this game quite extensively with an RTX 3070 and a 5800 X3D running DDR4 memory at 3200 megahertz. And then I also tested it with an RTX 4090 and an Intel 14700K with DDR5 memory running at 7000 megahertz. And finally, I also tested tested it with the Steam Deck. Now, it is important to note that Pal World does offer DLSS, but that's it. It does not offer XESS and it does not offer FSR. And it also does not offer any kind of frame generation technology from either Nvidia or AMD at this time. Now, even though it does offer DLSS, you'll probably find out that you don't really need DLSS simply because the game caps out at 120 FPS. And while there are performance issues and optimization issues, and that's to be expected, because it is an early access. Overall, most hardware will be able to run this game totally fine, except for the Steam Deck, and you'll see that here towards the end. But first, looking at the 3070 here, this is ran at native 1440p with everything maxed out. So this is on the epic quality preset, no upscaling of any kind. Our average frame rate is sitting at about 78 FPS. Our 1% lows are in the 40s, which is not what you wanna see at all. And our GPU utilization is at 100%, and the GPU temperature is sitting around 75. C and the VRAM utilization is just under six gigabytes, which isn't all that bad, everything considered. Now the 5800X3D is running fairly cold under 50C over here, sitting at about 47C, so not that bad. But overall, the performance in this game is something that is definitely playable and serviceable for people of a wide variety of hardware. But as you can see, there are a lot of little stutters and skips in the frame time graph. And this is not not exactly what you want to see, but it is indicative of an early access title. And now I'm skipping over to a scene where I'm on the beach, I'm in the open area, so there's a lot of different textures to render in here, and we're actually going into combat with two different pals. Pals are the animals you're seeing on the screen, and as you can see, the average frame rate is still sitting at around 78 FPS, but the active frame rate has now fallen down to below 70 FPS, and at times we are peaking up to 70, but not much higher than that, and our overall 1% lows are still in the 40s and now our VRAM has shot up to about 6.5 gigabytes of usage and so overall if you have an 8 gigabyte card even on maximum settings at 1440p you can run this game no problem. Okay so you see how the game runs with the 3070 but how well does it run on a generation 5 platform using the RTX 4090? Now we're going to take a look at that next but I did forget to mention this game is also coming out on release day on Game Pass so if you're a Game Pass member you're going to have access to this game and you won't have to pay $30 for it. So just keep that in mind. Also, a very quick shout out and thank you to all of my Patreon members. You all are incredibly awesome. And thank you so much for your continued support. If you're interested in becoming a member, there will be a link in the pinned comment below this video. All right, let's take a look at the 4090 performance. All right, taking a look at the 4090 system. Again, 14700K DDR5 memory running at 7000 megahertz. You can see we are averaging 120 FPS. 
FPS. And again, this is native. This is native 4K, everything maxed out, no upscaling of any kind. Our average FPS is 120. 1% lows are around 94 FPS. And our active frame rate is mostly around 120 with the occasional dip to 117, 118, things of that nature. The 14700K is running noticeably hotter than the 5800X3D was, hovering around the 60s to 70s. And the 4090 is about eight to nine degrees colder than what the 3070 was. And as you can see at native 4K with everything maxed out, our VRAM utilization is about 6.5 gigabytes. And the allocation here is around 9.4 gigabytes. So all in all, obviously, if you have the fastest hardware that money can buy for gaming, this game is going to run incredibly well. And I would expect nothing less. However, even with the fastest gaming hardware on the market, we still have the occasional dip and stutter and there's really bad pop in at times even with 24 gigabytes of vram on the 4090 there is still really bad pop in at times and you can still see frame time spikes in the graph up here overall i think a lot of that just has to do with it being an early access game i definitely think this is something that can easily be ironed out with a couple of updates if the developers are willing to put in the time and the effort this game as you can see is nothing groundbreaking in terms of overall graphics or texture quality or anything like that. In all honesty, when I first turned this game on, the first thing I thought was that with the right optimizations in place, this game could probably run on an iPhone. And now speaking about things that need the right optimizations, let's take a quick look at the Steam Deck and see how well Pal World actually runs on the Steam Deck. Is it even compatible? All right, so good news and bad news. The good news is that Pal World is in fact compatible with the Steam Deck. In fact, I didn't even have to force a specific Proton layer. I literally installed the game, hit play, and it just worked. So I got to give it a lot of props for that. It's incredibly impressive how Pocket Pair was able to get this game working on the Steam Deck in the early access window. That is impressive, all things considered. However, the bad news is it is still only giving me about a 30 to 34 FPS experience. And I understand it is a Steam Deck and I understand I do have to tamper my expectations with that. However, 30 FPS is still 30 FPS and it is noticeably bad. The game automatically defaulted to the low preset and even on the low preset, it is still running at about 30 to 34 FPS with the occasional dip down to 28, 29 FPS. And unfortunately, the Steam Deck is not compatible with DLSS and Pal World does not offer FSR. And so therefore we cannot leverage any kind of upscaling technologies at this time. But hey, Pal World is at least available on the Steam Deck and technically playable. And if you have the Steam Deck OLED, you may be able to squeeze out a little bit more performance. And now I want to talk about Pal World as a whole. We talked about the PC performance, the CPU performance, the GPU performance, but I really want to talk about the game. And overall, I got to say it's a mixed bag for me. It is a game I was looking forward to playing. It is a game that was on my wish list for many, many months. And I am a big Pokemon fan. The problem is, like I said in the beginning of the video, in the intro, Pal World is not what you think it is. If you think it's just a Pokemon game or a Pokemon ripoff with guns, you're going to be a little bit disappointed because it took me about 15 to 16 hours of playing the game before I ever even had access to use a gun in any capacity. And it wasn't even me using it. It was technically my pal or, you know, the creatures in the game, they're called pals. And so one of my pals has an ability where you can unlock it through the technology tree. And after you unlock it, you can go craft it. And then once you craft it, you can pair it with this pal. And then for a limited use, you can put the pal on your head and actually start shooting bullets. And so while the trailer makes it seem like, you know, guns are a huge part of the game, from what I can see so far is if that is true, True, it's going to be many, many hours down the road. I was also able to unlock a crossbow. And so that definitely livened up the gameplay a little bit for me. But again, that was, you know, several hours into the game. Early on, you really start off with nothing. You have your bare fist and you're running around almost naked with no clothing and you have to gather resources and you have to do a lot of base building. This game has a lot of survivability mechanics. And so that was something I was not fully expecting. At least 
least not to the degree in which Pocket Pair decided to implement it into the game. I would say the core foundation of Pal World is base building and survivability mechanics. You need to craft weapons, you need to craft armor, you need to collect wood, you need to collect stone. And a lot of these things start out as a manual, incredibly tedious process. And then over time, as you collect more pals and build up your base, then you can start to automate these processes. But at the end of the day, there is just so much of an emphasis on base building and survivability mechanics. And honestly, it was a little bit of a turnoff because a lot of times it felt incredibly tedious, incredibly boring. I want to go out there and I want to capture monsters and then I want to level up those monsters and then, you know, battle other monsters and battle trainers or whatever they're called in this world. But unfortunately, one of the fastest ways and best ways that to actually upgrade your monsters or level them up is by collecting resources. As you collect resources throughout the world, you will start to notice in the left hand corner that you're getting plus one XP or plus two XP. Basically, every time you gather a resource, any pal within your party is leveling up at that time. And so instead of going out and battling other trainers and things of that nature to level up your pal, you're just simply collecting wood, collecting stone, and collecting other resources in the world. And as you walk by and collect these resources, your pals are just sitting there leveling up in your party. In Pokemon, you can have a party of six, but in Pal World, you have a party of five. And in Pokemon, in order to level up your Pokemon, you have to have at least one Pokemon out on the field doing something. But in Pal World, you can technically have all five of your pals in your party, not even out on the field doing anything. And you just walk around, collect resources, and they all just continue to level and level and level in the background. Yeah, it definitely was not what I expected. Now, all of this is not necessarily a bad thing. I will admit, as I played more of the game and I started to build up my base and I started to collect more resources and I started to get a little bit more of a feel for the game, then I started to like it a little bit more. I didn't mind it as much, but initially when I found out, oh wait, I don't have anything, I'm starting from scratch, I'm gonna have to build everything from scratch, I really did not like that. And honestly, it was a massive turn off. A couple of other quick points. So the shooting in the game is actually nothing special at all. It is literally a point and shoot type of game. There's nothing here that is groundbreaking about the shooting mechanics. In fact, I would argue that the shooting mechanics here are about as bare bones as it can possibly get. There are some NPCs in the world that are considered bandits or syndicates, I think is what they're called. And they are evil and they capture pals and they lock them in cages. And, and then you have to go to these camps and then you clear out the camp and you can fight them with your pals. You can fight them with your pals in your party and you're just doing your own damage. And then you can collect the pal from the cage when you unlock the pal from the cage you automatically get that pal in your party there are dungeons but these dungeons do seem to be a little bit barren at this time so there's a lot of optimizations there that pocket pair does need to employ there are boss battles but the thing about the boss battles is that they seem almost unfair in fact the pal world seems like it's trying to be a pokemon ripoff with a lot of gameplay mechanics from the souls games or elden ring for example and what i mean by that is that these bosses that you're fighting are significantly more powerful than you. After almost 20 hours of gameplay, I still could not beat the first boss that you encounter because that boss is just so much more powerful than you are. And when you die, you lose all of your loot. And then you have to go back to the place where you died and pick up your loot if you want that back or you're gonna be starting over from scratch. And so that is why it is just so important to have your base built up as fast as possible and as much as possible, putting out as many resources as possible. Lastly, the world does offer fast travel points. And so you do have to go from region to region, unlocking these fast travel points. It's going to allow you to go from one section of the map to the other significantly faster. Now that is not a full comprehensive review of Pal World to the fullest extent. There are many other creators that specialize in that type of thing. Like I said, for me, I'm here to focus on PC performance in the early access period and give a few thoughts from, you know, like a hands-on impressions type of deal. Now, with all that being said, like I said, when I kept playing the game, it eventually started to grow on me a little bit, but I admit it was not what I expected. I definitely wanted and expected something completely different. And while I did have a little bit of fun playing the game, it's not something I'm yearning to go back to at this time. But that is my personal preference that is completely subjective and you may feel differently. Perhaps you love base building and maybe you love 
games that require you to focus heavily on survivability. And if that's you, then this game may be your cup of tea. And I would encourage you to check it out. After all, it's going to be on Game Pass. And so you can get a Game Pass subscription or maybe you already have one. And then not only do you have access to Power World, but you also have access to hundreds of other games. Or if you are the type of person that really wants to invest in early access titles, it is going to be $30 on launch day on Steam. But that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section below. Are you going to play Pal World? Are you interested in playing it? Have you already started playing it? What are your thoughts on the game? And is there anything else I should have tested with the hardware that was not covered in this video? If so, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.